All right, this uh, presentation is on chapter 35, uh, nuclear medicine. Um, so I'll be going over um, what it's about, what it is. Um, what is nuclear medicine? Well, nuclear medicine what it, uh, uses the, the radioactive properties of matter um, for diagnosis and for therapy. Um, it's going to determine, um, what it does is it, it determines the cause of a medical problem um, based on how the, uh, an organ or tissue is functioning or the physiology of that organ um, instead of just structural appearance. So the diagnostic x-ray um, looks at the structural appearance of bone and then determines whether what's wrong with it. Well this um, bases everything on function. So how well, how fun, you know, what, not, but if something's punctured or not, whether it's functioning properly or it isn't functioning properly. Um, how, it get, how it does that is it uses radiopharmaceuticals um, uses it diagnosis or therapy or medical research. Um, so we'll get into how those radiopharmaceuticals work here um, briefly or shortly. Um, a tracer um, are used in, that, that's what the radiopharmaceutical is. Tracers are used in, in nuclear medicine. Um, it's the radioactive material that is put into or introduced into the body. Um, you can take that by swallowing, by injection, or by inhalation. And they are, uh, tracers are selected um, by how they um, localize in specific organs or tissues. So how they um, seek out um, organs or tissues in the body. If you want to look at the spleen or the liver, um, that tracer is going to go to that particular organ and then you'll be able to study that organ. Um, different tracers are going to be used for different parts of the body. Um, Moron tracers, um, the tracer, once it's in there, it's radiopharmaceutical. So and I'll get more into what that is in a second, but it's radioactive, so it's going to emit gamma rays. Um, once it gets through the body, so once it localizes in the body, it's going to emit gamma rays from that, and then using a gamma camera or a scintillation camera, you can um, see those. You can, it's going to observe those gamma rays, and then it's, that's how you study it. Um, the nuclear medicine team. People on the team um, that work with nuclear medicine, you're going to have the physician, um, on the, of nuclear medicine, you're going to have a specialist, and that specialist is licensed to use the radioactive materials. Um, there will be a nuclear medicine tech, um, and that tech is educated um, in the practice and theory of nuclear medicine procedures. Um, you're going to have a physicist, um, and they're going to be experienced in the technology of nuclear medicine, how, how everything works, the physics of it all. Uh, then you also have a pharmacist, um, or a specially prepared technologist, and that person is going to be qualified um, to prepare the necessary radioactive pharmaceutical. So they're going to be able, they're going to know how to put everything together. Um, you know, team up the pharmaceutical with the radionuclide. Um, you hear about a lot about PET scans. Uh, PET is positron emission tomography. Uh, it's a non-invasive nuclear imaging technique. Um, basically, it's used to measure human cellular organ or system function. Um, and with this, you, there is. You use radioactive material, but it's very small doses. Um, the big difference between the, between PET uh, PET scans and all the other radiologic procedures are gone over here. Um, basically, um, PET uh, PET scans are going it's a data it's data acquisition to, uh, and analysis analysis techniques. Um, they're going to yield an image related to a particular physiologic parameter, um, such as blood flow or metabolism. Um, the images are created. Um, by the simultaneous detection of a pair of annihilation of annihilation radi radiation proton photons um, that result from positron decay. Um, when that happens, the the photons that are, are created go 180 degrees from each from each other. Um, I'll get I'll get more into that here after a little while too. Um, again, the tracer is specifically chosen for its similarity to naturally occurring. Um, to, it's chosen based on to where it's going to go in the body. Um, it's very similar to the naturally occurring biochemical constituents of the human body. Um, it's not going to alter the equilibrium conditions in the body. Um, it's very, it's not, it's, it's safe to use, basically, is what it's saying. It doesn't change anything in the body. Um, you also hear about SPECT, um, that's single proton emission computer tom tomography. Um, they both measure tissue function, they just do it in different ways. Um, the tissue function, again, is the physiology of the, of the body. Um, SPECT uses collimators 
um, and lower energy photons. Um, so it's less energy going in, less radiation going into, but it, because of that, it's less sensitive and it's less accurate than PET. So PET's the most accurate you can get. Um, it's actually more, uh, it's better resolution by a factor of two, um, all the way up to 10, 10 times better. Um, the physical properties of nuclear medicine, um, radionuclides, um, they decay by the emission of their alpha, beta, and gamma, uh, uh, by the emission of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. So they're going to decay, and while they're decaying, those particles are coming off, and that's causing the decay. So you hear about half-lives. Um, half-lives half used in nuclear medicine range from several hours to several days. Um, half-life is the amount of time it takes to lose half of its original energy. Um, radionuclides that are produced, um, you're going to find those, they don't, they're not naturally occurring, they're actually created, um, and they're produced in reactors and particle accelerators. Um, the na natural, naturally occurring radionuclides, are, they're not suitable for this um, because um, they're, not, they're very limited in their availability and they um, have a much higher um, radiation dose and the patient, it would be very bad for the patient to be receiving that much radiation. Um, the most commonly used uh, radionuclide is technetium-99, but you also see iodine-123 and 131 being used, indium-111, thallium-201, and, and gallium-67. So those are the most common radionuclides used in nuclear medicine. Uh, radiopharmaceuticals. There's going to be more than 30 different radiopharmaceuticals used in nuclear medicine. I believe they're trying to create um, more all the time. Just, it just needs to be um, better than the ones previously used. Um, the two components of radiopharmaceutical is the radionuclide and the pharmaceutical. The radionuclide is the radiation um, thing that's going to give off the radiation. The pharmaceutical, um, that's uh, basically is chosen on the basis of the preferential localization and participation in the physiological function of a given organ. So that pharmaceutical is tagged to a radionuclide. That pharmaceutical is going to seek out that particular organ. It's going to go to that directly into the body. When it's introduced into the body, it goes directly to that, and then that's where the radionuclide takes place. Um, takes um, that. That's the radionuclide's turn. That emits the radiation from that organ, and that's how you view it. Um, the radio radiopharmaceuticals need to be sterile and pyrogen free. Um, they need to undergo um, a series of quality control measures required of all conventional drugs. And then again, um, after it's administered, um, the organ is localized and the radiation emitted from it is going to be detected by the gamma cameras or any imaging instrument used in that. Um, there are many desirable characteristics of the radiopharmaceuticals. Um, you want it to have a low cost. You want it to be easily uh, produced and readily available. Um, uh, you want a very low, the lowest possible radiation dose you can get um, to still produce quality images. Um, the energy is between 100 and 400 keV for the for the photons. Um, the physical half life needs to be greater than the time required to prepare the material for injection. Um, There needs to be suitable chemical forms for rapid localization. Um, it has to have low toxicity. It has to be very stable. Um, if not completely stable, it has to be near, uh, near stable. So you don't want an unstable substance going into the body.